What's up everyone, this is Seth from Heartbreak Garage. Today we will be doing another install slash how-to video. So, to show you, today we'll be installing the FDF angle kit and Silver's coilovers. Um, I won't really be doing a how-to on the coilovers because my car already has coilovers. So if you're going to be installing coilovers and deleting the transverse leaf spring, uh, it will be a little bit of a different video for you. So we're really going to be focusing on the FDF angle kit. With the FDF angle kit, you will be getting your upper control arms, lower control arms, and knuckles. My car already has the vet nuts angle kit, but I come into contact with my lower control arm right here you can see how bad it is on this side a little better so I'll come in contact with the inner barrel on my wheel to my lower control arm so before we start the install let's just check out the amount of angle you get with the vet nuts kit so we can compare it after the install Real quick, I'll just show you uh, where it was hitting at full lock. Obviously, it'll be a little bit different since the car's jacked up and the sus suspension isn't compressed, but this is how bad it's hitting. All right, so real quick, I just want to show you what parts I had to buy for the FDF angle kit install. So I bought these longer tie rods. Um, if you want to see what these tie rods are, just check out my extended tie rod video. I didn't want to clutter the FDF angle kit install with too much for people that really didn't need to know this information. Um, I also bought these brake lines. These are Russell brake lines. They're 18 inch. Here's the part number for them. And in order to run these brake lines, I had to buy these adapters. Here's the part number for these adapters. And then I also had to buy different upper control arm bolts without this shank in them right here. Uh, these bolts are M10 by 1.5. And I wanted to say thanks to DCR underscore drift on Instagram. Uh, he helped me with finding these brake lines and these fittings. So real quick, I just wanted to say thanks for that and thanks for helping me out. First, we will remove the caliper. It's uh, two 21 millimeter bolts. Then we'll remove the rotor and then we will start disassembling the front suspension. Next, we'll be removing the knuckle. So it'll be a 19 up top and a 23 at the bottom. Now that we have the nuts loose on the knuckle, we're gonna go ahead and remove the bolt on the tie rod end and fully remove the knuckle. All right, next we will be removing the sway bar since the FDF kit does not support a front sway bar. Um, you will remove it by using an 18 millimeter wrench and a six millimeter Allen like so. And then next you will remove these two 13 millimeter bolts and then the sway bar will be out.
All right, next I'm gonna remove the upper control arm. So it's four 15 millimeter bolts. And then I'll be removing the coilover, which are 13 millimeter bolts, a 14 millimeter nut, and then you have to hold the top with a five millimeter Allen. So while we're in here, I'm gonna go ahead and delete this crap right here. I uh, already got it unplugged. Tell them on by five millimeter bolts. And do the same thing with the sway bar. All right, next we will remove the lower control arm. That is done by removing this 21 millimeter nut and bolt and that 21 millimeter nut and bolt. Next you have to remove the three torx bolts on the back of the knuckle to get the hub off. That will be a T55 torx and then after that we will compare the stock parts to the FDF parts. Here is the upper control arm. Um, the steering stop will face towards the rear of the car. Um, Here is the lower control arm and the way you can tell is this part will go towards the front of the car and then if you look at where the coilover mounts where it sticks up that's towards the top and then we have the knuckle and the tie rod end will go towards the front of the knuckle and the steering stop will go towards the back so now that we have everything apart, uh, we're going to go ahead and start putting it back together. So I'll start by putting the upper control arm and the lower control arm on. So when I started to put the upper control arm on, I noticed that this bolt right here is hitting the brake line. So basically I'm going to take this bracket off and uh, flip it. But in order to take the bracket off and flip it, I'm going to have to disconnect the brake line um, my brake lines haven't come in yet the extended brake lines for the angle kit so i'm just going to take this retaining clip out and let it hang down for now and then whenever my brake line comes in i'll actually flip these brackets all right another thing i noticed when installing the upper control arm um, the stock bolt has a shank on it so it will work since the mount on the stock upper control arm is larger but with the FDF control arm um, the shank sticks out past the mount so either you can put some washers in it to space it out or uh, I went and purchased another bolt um, these are M10 by 1.5 if you do need to go purchase any all right, so now that we have the right bolts, um, go ahead and put the upper control arm and the lower control arm on. One thing I would like to note real quick is I put the nut on the top of the upper control arm mount because if you put the bolt on top, you cannot get the bolt out without unbolting the control arm. Um, so basically, I just put the bolt up through the bottom. Of the upper control arm in and the lower control arm in so now I'm gonna go ahead and mount the coilover we got the silvers coilovers on next we're gonna put the knuckle on but before we put the knuckle on we're gonna have to put the hub on the knuckle all right so I got the knuckle on the other side and I put the wheels on both sides and uh, did a quick alignment so here is the vet nut side with the wheel on 
and then here is the difference with the FDF side. All right, so once you have one side put together, uh, you just repeat the steps for the other side like so, and then you'll be all set. So let's get this alignment set up and see what the final product looks like. So I have the FDF kit fully bolted on, so let's check out the angle. All right, cars back from the alignment shop. So let's see how much angle we've gained from this FDF angle kit. So I have a little bit of uh, positive camber at full lock. Uh, the alignment I went with is negative four degrees of camber, five millimeters on each side of toe out and 8.2 caster. Uh, I didn't really want to go with anything crazier due to the fact that I, you know, off and on daily this car to work and back. So this should be a pretty conservative um, alignment for me to be able to drive the car and not go through front tires too quick. So if you like this video, you want to see more content, more DIY videos and some more drifting, please like and subscribe to my channel um i got a lot more planned for this car hopefully be going to more events this year since i've gotten so much done to it i just have one more thing i'd like to do before i go to my event and that's install the hydro so i already got it apart a little bit uh, i got the measurements done about to order the lines and the hydro i already got the dual caliper set up from drift hq so Stay tuned. Uh, hopefully in another week or so, we'll be doing a, doing a DOI video on how to install the Drift HQ dual caliper setup with a Chase Bays Hydro.